Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing a Murderer Talking News. Before we get started, take a moment to subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Don't forget to hit like, and definitely don't forget to share your thoughts below in the comments. The Delphi case is over 2100 days old. An affidavit for probable cause for a recent arrest is still sealed. A local man that worked at a CVS by the name of Richard Allen is accused of taking the lives of two young girls who lived in Delphi, Indiana. Their names that they are known by are Libby and Abby. The eighth grade girls who went on a walk spontaneously near the Monine Bridge at the historical park ran into this man and at the time was unidentified while on their walk. He had on a jacket, blue jeans, and a hat. The girls are able to capture this man on a camera and send it through the Snapchat. One of their friends luckily took a screenshot of that photo. Two girls were dropped off by Libby's sister, and they were supposed to meet back at the place where they were dropped off when one of their parents showed up a few hours later. When they show up, Libby and Abby are nowhere to be found. They never show up to their pickup. Search teams are called in because they're concerned that the girls might be lost in this cold, wooded, damp area. They search until there's no more light when searchers say they need to call off the search. The parents are not happy about that. They're worried about the girls and the fact that they may still be alive out there and that they didn't have jackets. And it was going to be chilly that night. A few people returned back to search the area for the girls. And they search on into the wee early morning hours. February 14th, Valentine's Day of 2017. Volunteer searchers return to the area. Family members are all out there searching on foot. One of them being Libby's sister. Kelsey German. She's afraid to search. She's afraid of what she might find out there. She obviously has a feeling that something may not be right. A few hours go by and one of the searchers come up to her and ask Kelsey, what kind of shoes was Libby wearing? Kelsey asked what they had found. They explained that they find these black Nikes and Kelsey said yes. Those are Libby's Nike shoes. It wasn't long, and they had discovered a gruesome sight. A man had actually zoomed into an area that they were not allowed to search and noticed that there was two people lying in the area. This property actually belonged to a man by the name of Logan. And I'll go into more details on part three on this case. Right now, we're preparing for the probable cause that's coming out today, possibly. We know that Logan was interviewed by investigators and FBI and lied about an alibi. This raised red flags for FBI agents. But he wasn't alone. Sources have told Fox 59 that Allen voluntarily came forward in the early days of the investigation and admitted that he was in the vicinity of the bridge, at least that day when the girls were missing. Police couldn't find enough evidence of either of these guys to make an arrest. And we're going into over four years with this case, and there was no arrest, no suspects named, at least not until October of this year, 2022. And it was Richard Allen, the guy who had come forward those many years ago, admitted to him being in the same area on the same day that the girls went missing. He worked at the CVS in the community and had even processed pictures of the girls for their families for free. The family tweeted, Today is the day. What was interesting about his arrest and the press conference was U.S. Marshal, the uh, U.S. Marshal Service was present on the stage 
with its agents ringing the sanctuary of the church where the press briefing was held on October 31st of 2022 when officials actually confirmed Allen's arrest. Marshals track fugitives and provide expertise in cell phone tracing and the recovery of evidence from electronic devices. And they had a big part in Richard Allen's arrest that day. Richard remains behind bars and his family and himself, while well, they're all getting threats. His wife had to quit her job, go into hiding. They were having to move Richard around from place to place. He pens a letter begging the court to give him an attorney and stress to the judge the danger his family faced. He threw himself to the mercy of the courts. And here's something that really stood out to me is one of the judges had already stepped away from the case. So here's an interesting fact. Prosecutor Nicholas McLean successfully convinced Carroll Circuit Judge Benjamin Diner to seal the probable cause affidavit. This is what investigators would have relied on to make that arrest of Allen last week. We know that investigators were going, well, they had search warrants to go through his home where they were collecting evidence, supposedly linking him to the murders of these two girls and the scene of the crime. This is according to Russ McQuaid, Fox 59. So what people want to know most about was sealed to be non-public at the hearing on October 28th. So that's two days after his arrest. They said it would be for substantial cause and that it would actually have to be a very limited duration. And a defense attorney that was not actually attached to this case said that basically he does have the right to know the nature of the charges against him, which is true, he does. So this new judge on this case, Judge Gall, inclined toward the release of the document and the Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter said he is not opposed to the release, that the probable cause stands on its own, and the investigative quality will not be affected by its release. All we know is a lot of people, including the families, they want to know what they know, what led them to this guy, and what do they have against this guy that actually puts him at the scene of the crime. Till this day, none of us know what happened to the girls. I mean, this has been tight-lipped for years, and the public is starting to demand. They want to know what is happening with this case. So today, we will find out if we will get any clues as to why the police suspect Richard Allen is involved with the girls' uh, demise. And then later today, Richard Allen actually was taken to the courthouse, handcuffed, his head turned away from the camera, avoiding the cameras at all costs, it seems, at least until he couldn't any longer. So he did show up there with a tight security surrounding him, and he's ushered into the courtroom. One of his reasonings for being there is his petition to be let out on bail. He claims that because neither the proof of guilt is evident nor the presumption of the guilt strong, he is seeking a hearing to release the accused. What he's wanting is for either the uh, court to reduce his bail to a reasonable amount or to release him. In one news article, it is said that the judge decided to take the motion to release the court documents on the deaths of the two Delphi teenagers under advisement. The judge said sh that she would release an order at least at a future time during this hearing today, Tuesday of 2022. Richard Allen did get his bond hearing set for I'm sorry, February 17th of 2023. So some interesting um, things that were said in the courtroom is the prosecutor for the case also said that there is a reason to believe that Allen is not the only one involved in the slaying of Libby German and Abby Williams. So here you're hearing more information, not a lot of information, but some information 
kind of pointing you in a new direction, saying, you know, we believe there's more than one person involved with this heinous crime, but we only see one arrest. So maybe that arrest was meant to lead them to something new. While the prosecutors stated their point, Andrew Baldwin, the defense attorney for Richard Allen, said, our client is the wrong guy. Also saying that uh, this seal problem calls uh, affidavit is flimsy at best. You expect more than what I saw, end quote. So the defense attorney giving you an idea that he doesn't believe that they've got enough on this guy to even say it's him. We hear the prosecutor and the defense attorneys all talking about this affidavit. And we have no idea what's in there. What are they talking about? We don't even have enough information to even speculate along with them. So it's just, they're giving us a path, but there's no light. So you can see here, I mean, it was a, wow. The security on this guy is insane. So it's just crazy. How much is that costing? I mean, what kind of threats is this guy getting for God's sake? But at least we're hearing, you know, the judge is saying there's a possibility that they may release some of this information while the prosecutor is arguing, saying, hey, you're going to jeopardize the case. So we know that Richard Allen is 50 years old now. So if he is, um, if he was part of this, which we're, we're not saying he is, but if he was, he was about 45 years old when this crime was committed. And investigators suspect that he could not do this alone. We've heard the mention of Keegan Klein several times with this case, though he's not directly arrested or been charged in this case. The man's property where the girls were found is no longer here. Logan, he passed away in 2020 due to difficulties with COVID. And so prosecutors, um, I forgot to mention this, have a problem with these documents being released because they're worried about witnesses in this case being harassed. So that, that comes believe me that possibly Klein is a witness, but uh, I really am not certain who else could be witnesses, but someone in that circle. So most likely that is a good point that the prosecutors are bringing up. So she's going to have to, I don't know if I said this right earlier or not, you know, guys, I get, I have dyslexia. I say stuff backwards sometimes. Um, she needs to take some time to be advised over this motion and that the documents would be released at a later date. The last thing you want to do in a case like this, especially one where there's a lot of criminal activity, it appears that speculation. Um, you want to protect your witnesses. Otherwise you're not going to have any. So if those names get out more information out, you, there's a possibility those witnesses will be harassed and therefore you have to worry about whether or not they're going to be there for Libby and Abby. So uh, I'm very proud of those people that are coming forward and who are going to witness for those two girls. So this once very safe family oriented community, well, they're dealing with some evils and these people have some very dark desires. And you would think that people in this day and age would be able to steer themselves away from such dark desires. The one thing that a community should be good at is protecting their children. And once they are not protecting their children any longer, that's when that community needs to take a second glance and look around them. So this guy, Richard Allen, he he's saying he's not guilty. He had nothing to do with this. And his main concerns are for his wife, who's being harassed, and himself. As you can see, I mean, with all that security around him, it was just insane. 
So here's one point of view from the courtroom when Allen walked in. According to HLN TV investigators, uh, reporter Barbara McDonald, she said that Allen appeared to make eye contact with the families of Libby and Abby once he was escorted into the courtroom. She said, quote, I think the family's members were genuinely curious to see how he, Allen, was going to present himself, end quote. She continued with, quote, he definitely appeared curious. He made eye contact for several seconds, scanned the two rows where the family members were sitting. Once he did sit down, he was looking around the courtroom, end quote. So that's about all we know right now on this, and I'll actually do more research on this. We do know that he has that hearing, which is set for February 17th, 2023. And his attorney is asking, well, filed a motion asking that his client be released on his own reconnaissance. So guys, share what you think below on this. What do you think? Do you think they had the wrong guy? based off of what we have available to us today. Do you believe that we should release the probable cause affidavit to the public or not? So guys, I want to thank you all so much for your support to this channel. Don't forget about these faces that are still out there missing. We have Dulce and Jasmine Robinson on the end of our program today. Please show the family your support and these missing faces and share their stories. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys soon.